Week six of the NFL season coming to a close tonight with Tennessee at Jacksonville. And guys, for the first time this year, the favorites actually held an advantage. Yes, they're going to have a winning week. The Chalks going 7-5-1 against the spread on Sunday. That's the good news. The bad news is that the favorites are 19 games under 500 so far this season. And as I always say, when the underdogs are winning like that, well, guys, only two things are happening. They're both bad from your perspective. Sports books lining up and down the boulevard here in Vegas are winning a fortune. You, the gambler, you're probably losing your shirt because basic human nature is everybody gravitates towards the favorites. And don't think for a minute that the odds makers aren't aware of that fact as well. And it's not just you, the players, a lot of handicappers too. Hi, everyone. Al DeMarco here, and this is going to be your Monday video report. I've got a free selection on your Monday night total coming up in a moment. Of course, I have won 9 out of 10 in football college and pro combined, dating back to last Monday's winner, which happened to be my biggest play of the season in the NFL, Jets getting the job done against the Vikings. As you all know, that was courtesy a miraculous finish, a Brett Favre interception return for a touchdown to give us and the Jets the cover in that game. How many times have I said, and in my 25 years in the business, I know the breaks ultimately even out, even though when they're going against you, you don't think so. Case in point again yesterday, part of a 4-0 Sunday sweep, Pittsburgh, my best bet, well, hey, the Steelers didn't look like they were going to cover the two-touchdown spread, but then on the 14-yard line of Cleveland with about 90 seconds to play, Ben Roethlisberger throws his third touchdown pass of the game, giving the Steelers the 28-10 win and us the cover. As I said, part of a 4-0 sweep yesterday, which also included Indianapolis, because, again, I bought down the half point to 2.5 on the Colts, and, again, that strategy paid off. More about that in a moment. Plus, New Orleans, and how about all the scoring breaking out in the Jets-Denver game in the fourth quarter, pushing that one over the total. 4-0 sweep yesterday, 9-1 college and pro football run combined since last week. Monday. And guys, let's again talk about the value of buying the half point insurance. Look at it yesterday. As you know, I'm a big proponent of buying off three, four, seven, and sometimes ten. When the line crosses those numbers, you buy either up to three and a half or down to two and a half if the number is three. Case in point, yesterday's game, New England and Indianapolis last week, pretty much all week that line was New England a solid three, but then on Sunday it dipped down to two and a half. Patriots win it by three in overtime. Depending on where you bet it, when you bet it, you added two and a half or three. You had you were sitting pretty. If you bought the half point, you definitely got the win one way or another. Of course, if you had Baltimore, you either walked away with the push or you walked away with the win, depending on when and where you purchased the half point insurance. Look at the Colts-Washington game. We all benefited. My customers and myself benefited from last night. Indianapolis bought down to two and a half. Do you realize you could have middled that game? Indianapolis down to two and a half. Washington up to three and a half and you had a nice middle and you won both sides of the fence. How about the Houston-Kansas City contest? The Texans, a four and a half point choice against KC. They win it by four. If you bought down the half point, you walked away with a push in that game. I don't care how many times I can say this to drive it through to you guys. It is worth putting the power of money, using insurance to edge the odds slightly in your favor again when the lines are three, four, seven, and occasionally ten. Now you are not buying on a 14 point line like the Steelers yesterday because fact is, if that team or any team laying two touchdowns or more can't win by a two touchdown or more margin. That little old half point, it's a stupid financial move to buy a half point in those situations. Again, three, four, seven, and ten, those are the prices. And when the lines cross there, that's when you buy the hook. Uh, overall, favorites, as I said, are 19 games under 500 so far this season. Home favorites, five and four yesterday, but they are still 12 games under 500 so far this year. Road favorites, such as Tennessee tonight, are eight games under the magical 500 mark. Hey, speaking of backdoor cover, how about the Detroit Lions yesterday? 50-yard field goal from Jason Hansen with about three and a half minutes to play. They sneak in again. Number one covering team so far in the NFL this season. Covering again, getting 10, losing 28-20 to at New York, despite the fact that Drew Stanton had to come in their third stringer when Sean Hill went out with an arm injury early in that contest. Now, tonight, you've got Tennessee at Jacksonville. Tennessee, third road game in four weeks. But let's face it, the Titans have won two of the previous uh, road games, winning at Dallas, winning at New York. A pair of big road upsets there. Uh, Tennessee, 7-8 and eight straight up in ATS lifetime on Monday nights. But... They have covered five of the last seven in this series against the Jaguars, who are coming off their second straight win. They rallied from a 10-0 early deficit at Buffalo to beat the Bills in that contest, 36-26 last Sunday, a game in which Jacksonville, again, turnovers plagued them. Three turnovers led to 17 of the Bills' 26 points in that contest. The key for Jacksonville in that game, the run game, of course, 216 yards rushing. The bad news for the Jaguars... 
They suck against the spread. 12 and 26, 12 and 25 ATS in their last 37 games, and at home they've only covered five of their last 19. The good news? Lifetime on Monday nights, they're 6 and 2 straight up, 5, 2 and 1 against the spread. Now, this game tonight, going to be hopefully my 10th football winner in the last 11 releases dating back to last Monday's winner on the Jets. Nine and one football run, five straight NFL winners following yesterday's 4-0 sweep. Get my Monday night winner right now. As for your free play guys, oh and by the way, I would be remiss if I didn't congratulate Chuck O'Brien for doing it again. How easy was a 75 dime winner number two in a row yesterday on New Orleans hammering Tampa Bay? Chuck O'Brien now 16 and 2 with his NFL side selections this year. 16 and 2. Never in the history of this website has a handicapper started 16 and 2 with their NFL selections any season since its existence. So congratulations to Chuck. Also, kudos to Stephen Nover cashing in with only the fourth 100 dime play in his 17 years as a professional handicapper, 16 of which. He's won in the NFL as he scored last night, buying the half point down on Indianapolis and getting the win and cover with the Colts on the road at Washington and for his fourth straight winning day as well. So congratulations to him. As for your total tonight, it's sitting right around 45 points. I say you have to go over in this game. Listen, guys, you know, totals on Monday Night Football dating back the last three years, 24-14-1 over the last 39 games. You've got a Tennessee team that's giving up an average of 30 points per game in its last four. A Tennessee, excuse me, Jacksonville giving up 30 points per game in their last four. Also a Jaguars team that has scored 76 points in consecutive wins against the Colts and the Bills. Meanwhile, Tennessee has put on 83 points in its last three games against the Giants, the Cowboys, and the Broncos. I say this one goes over, not by much, maybe only 48, 49 points scored, but an over is an over. That's your free pick. Good luck, everybody, and I'll catch you again on Tuesday.